Sophia, so the Nerds of Color. Huge congrats on the new series. Thank you both for taking the time to speak with me today. Absolutely. Absolute pleasure. Pleasure for me. And so first of all, I've gotten to see the series. It's fantastic. I really enjoyed okay. it. Of course. But I wanted to ask you, obviously, the series is an adaptation from this beloved novel that is so well known. Did it really matter to you to stay true to that original material or did you want to make it your own in certain ways to surprise fans? What were you leaning towards? Uh, staying true to the tone, the intent and the idea and the style of the storytelling. But uh, the, the detail, it's re rarely possible to do a good adaptation that sticks to the absolute detail because television... Well, the line I keep using, which I think is right, a book has a beginning, middle and an end and a, a TV show has a beginning, middle and end once a week. Right. So yes. the structure is massively different, yeah. massively different. Um, I love the book, so I would never want to uh, uh, betray it or uh, or make it seem as though I'm fixing it. Oh, look, this is where Audrey got it wrong. I don't think that ever. I do think, however, it's not a TV show. And to yeah. some extent, to some degree, I have to treat the book like a an, uh, like a format for a TV show, and I'm writing some further adventures of Henry and Claire, a little bit like that. But I mean, that's that that that's an exaggeration. But you know what I mean. It has to it has to function as a sh uh, as a show, not just as a, as a transcription of a novel. But I I loved it. I wasn't there to fix it. I love that answer. It was really that's the perfect view, David. Do you Thank have you any thoughts? Thank you. Of course. Well, for me, it's a situation in which when I read the scripts, that was my Bible. Yeah. And I, I had no intent to read the books. I don't want to I don't want to be cluttered or bothered by something else. When I did Game of Thrones, I felt the exact same way. So mm -hmm. to me, that was the Bible and that was what I lived by. Yeah, definitely. And I want to give you both a fun question. If you could time travel to see one event or meet any person from either the past or the future, what would you choose and why? Oh. Are you going to answer that first, Stephen? Oh, no. I'm <laughs> not going to an answer. I think, I think the condition of being a very happy man is wanting to be right now and right <laughs> here. I think I'd mostly use time travel to avoid very long plane trips. Uh, um, that's perfect. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm very, very happy. I, I'll tell you what. I mean, I'm, I, I've just turned 60 and that's a pain in the arse. So I, 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 if I could just take a few years off, that'd be nice. I'd not, yeah. That one. I'm happy here, I'm happy now. For me, it would be basically the moment I met my wife where I fell in love at first sight. That was about 20, 1984. That hmm. I want to live again. I love that, that's precious. I mean, also, if you did that, you did that, there'd be two of you, David. There'd yeah, be yeah, two of you turning yeah. up on that day. Enjoy it. <laughs> She thanked all our ships that arrived at once. <laughs> and I also wanted to ask you, you know, there's so many fun dynamics on the show and really enjoyable to see unfold on the screen. Was there a favorite that you are most excited for fans to see when they watch the series? Um, my favorites, I mean, I really like the the rather complicated guess who's coming to dinner episode, uh, episode yes. four. Oh. Uh, which is really just, uh, it's the old trick of let's get all our characters drunk and in the same room. Uh, I also uh, adore the moment when 16-year-old Claire finally realizes he is her husband. Yeah. You know, the, uh, because I'm her fucking husband moment. I think it's rather wonderful. And I like the end of the show when it all goes mad and they all sing along. I think I like, I like a big sing along. I love it. What about you, David? Well, for me, I, 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 I can't tell you, those scenes are all wonderful, I feel, but the overall arc of the series was something that was so special to me. I normally will go direct to pilot and then kind of move on, but for these, I wanted to be involved in all six episodes. So to me, it was about something that, this is a story I've wanted to tell all my life. And uh, I, kind of, I kind of equated it to um, um, a line in a film I once, re I once saw where, the uh, actress said to Tom Cruise, I loved you all my life, even before I met you. I loved the very thought of you. I loved the promise of you. And you kept your promise. Well, I loved this script before it was made. And I think I fell in love with it. And it stayed that way. Love that.
And I imagine, you know, the time travel element does make it harder to tell this story, but it also makes it that much more fun and challenging. So what was it like getting to play with all the different ages and the different time periods and see it come to life on set like that? Well, so much of it really was, in a sense, preparation, preparation, preparation. You know, making sure that, you know, Theo James worked so very hard, wanting to make sure that uh, he got the different different characters correctly, the different head spaces of the characters correctly, and making sure that that all worked. And I think that that was a very special thing that he did. And also, too, I rose with the same way. I also brought in a, a, a Terry Notary as a movement expert who did things like taught the people how to be Planet of the Apes actors and how to play those characters, as well as Terminator. And... Um, um, that was something that really mattered to the actors as well. And that helped each of them find those pair of character, those situations as well. But it really, again, had to preparation, preparation, and the different attitudes a 21-year-old would have opposite mm -hmm. a 41-year-old. So it was something that was a lot of fun to kind of play with and keep on it. Definitely. What about you, Stephen? Uh, well, for me, it was mostly uh, in terms of uh, uh, writing it. Uh, that sort of jigsaw of trying to work out how, <laughs> how everything relates to everything else is yeah. quite terrifying. But it's also, I mean, I, I, I've got the kind of brain that likes that sort of thing. That character knows this, this character doesn't know that yet. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to get to there for me. I mean, I, I, I like the, there's an element of farce in it, especially in episode four. Yeah, Imagine having to go to the same dinner twice and actually having to think about the real ramifications of that. Normally, one thing I thought about was normally in time travel movies, People have perfect memories. They yes. remember exactly what he said 13 years ago. And I was thinking yep. of the line that I write for Henry. He says, can you remember what you said yesterday? <laughs> I mean, and I think I couldn't. I yeah, couldn't. I Whenever couldn't. I see a, a YouTube interview with me, I never know what I'm going to say next. <laughs> what clue? Sorry, David. That's true. No, I'm good. That's, <laughs> that's true, honestly. <laughs> And I also wanted to ask, were there any specific challenges for this project that you maybe haven't faced on past projects that made it unique? There are different challenges. Um... Well, one thing is, uh, you know, it's all about the time travel element, so to speak. And a lot of times people say, well, how are we going to do that? How are we going to how are we going to make it special? How are we going to make it different? How are we going to make a science uh, version that's kind of the sci-fi fans will love and so forth? And and I kept saying. And as Stephen and I basically talked for the first time about it, we basically decided, and Stephen basically had this where it shouldn't be in effect at all. It should be as if we basically blink and they're gone. And that to me was some, something that basically kept the story real because mm -hmm. it kept it feel honest. And we all, all basically kind of be involved and involve ourselves more in the story. And that's something that was a lot of fun to kind of play the reality of that. Yeah. yeah. Element on, in answer to that is that also, time travel works differently in The Time Traveler's Wife than in most time travel shows. Yes. Back to the Future, Quantum Leap, Doctor Who, whatever, you can change time. But in this one, there is no such power. No control. Same. And really, really fixing that in the audience's mind. He can't do anything. He's just rattling around. So right. Yeah. To, yeah you have to really I noticed that immediately. It was very interesting. Thank you both so much again for taking the time. Huge congrats. And thank you. You're both wonderful to speak with. Thank All you. Right. Good to Thank meet you. you. Good Bye. to meet you. Bye. The activist directors, comments and the lectures, fanboys, professional artists and professors. Maybe a nerd who's just like you, talking about the things that you like too. So I invite you to the NOC. In full color, you see me. The hard not lying. Comics, movies and TV. Yeah. Pop culture with a different perspective. Watch it on your screen. Hit play, so check this.